In this video, we're going to take a look at one of the game hacking challenges that I made for Integrity's Lead Up Live CTF 2024. As you can see, it is a Unity challenge, and this one's quite simple. If you've watched any of my game hacking videos before, using cheat engine stuff to manipulate values in memory, then you should be able to do this one, all right? It's quite simple, yeah. We've just got a cat which goes around the screen and squashes these bugs. For every bug that you squash, you get a point, and you can change the volume here. That's basically it. So how to solve this challenge? Well, there's at least three ways that you could do it. First of all, I'm going to open up DNSpy. This is just a tool which allows you to decompile C-sharp binaries or DLLs. And it means we can open up some of the files that we use to create the game and basically look at the code, maybe change some of it, as long as there's no obfuscation or anything in place and depending how the game was compiled. So let me just go to the game build directory. And then we are looking in, oh, where are we looking? We're looking in data, resources, no. Yeah, you can see it's been a while since I did anything like this. Here we go. All right, we're looking for this, the assembly C -sharp .dll, And we open that up and we will get the functions in here over on the left. So, well, we've got a classes here. You can see audio manager. We've got a bug controller. We've got a bug spawner script, and whenever you click on these, it'll come up with all the class stuff, and we can just drill down into the functions here as well. Um, so we can see that we have some stuff going on with the colors changing, we've got a min and a max speed, so maybe we wanna change the speed of our character so we can pick up more bugs, or change the speed of the bugs so that there are more on screen. We could change the spawn speed maybe of the bugs, so there's like 100 spawn in per second, so it's easier to get points. But we don't actually know what the condition at the moment is to get the flag. So that's what we want to find first. And if you go to the game manager, you will see that there are some interesting things in here. One is display win image, decrypt image from file and check win condition. And here's our win condition. It says that the score must be minus 1337 in order to decrypt the flag. So yeah, it would have been hard to work that out just by playing the game. But now that we know what the condition is, we can run the game again. And we'll open up Cheat Engine this time. Let me move this over here. Cheat Engine, and we'll attach it to the process. We're basically going to try and find, do you want to try the tutorial? No, no. Okay, I uh, can't remember how to get there. Should have done the dark theme and stuff here first. Let me see if I can quickly do it. All right, forget it. Let's just do it in this annoying bright mode. All right, here's our game. So first, we want to attach it to the process. Here it is, bug hunting. And we want to look for the first value. So at the moment the score is zero. So let me first search for a zero. And you'll see that we've got like 44 million results. So it's going to be quite hard for us to find the right one. But now that I've just got a bug, now what we can say is, okay, all those values that were originally zero, how many of them are now one? And there's actually only 21,000. So still too much to manually work out, but we can just repeat this process until we drill down to the right one. So let's go now two. And now we've got 343. Okay, we're getting there. Let's do three. And next scan. And yep, see how close we're getting. What I can do now is just add all of these to our table. And I might actually just go and grab another one. You see that one of them didn't change there. So it's not going to be this one. It's going to be one of these. And I can probably just freeze all of these unless one of these is like something important, which is going to crash the program. Let's find out. So I'm going to try and change this to, in fact, I should probably change them all. Let's just see. Let's see if we do one. They might all be kind of linked together. So uh, there we go. I'll change it to minus 1337. And there we go. I've got minus 1336 now because I got a point. So um, we probably want to change it then to minus 1338. And then whenever we get a point, it's going to take us to minus 1337. And there is our flag on screen. That's it, that's one way to solve this challenge. And another way is just to patch the binary. So if you just decompile it with the NSPY as we've done here, you can basically go here and say, all right, we wanna edit this method because this is just a client side thing, right? There's nothing happening on the server side. So yeah, we can basically go here and say, if the score is one, then we win, just give us a flag. Uh, we compile it, we click save, um, okay. And then if we go back to the game, this time, as soon as we get a point, it should give us a flag. I guess we could have just set the score to zero there as well. Might have been fine. There we go. That's it. Another way to solve it.
The third way, of course, is I couldn't really work out what the best way to store the flag was going to be. I didn't want to store it in plain text where people could just like reverse the code here. So it is encrypted with AES and then the IV for it has a little bit of obfuscation around. So, I mean, it is possible just to deobfuscate the IV, extract the private key and the encrypted flag, and then go and do some AES decryption on it. I think that's actually a lot harder than just and more time consuming than just like patching this binary or using cheat engines. So I don't really care which one of those you did. There are at least three different ways to solve the challenge. So all are fine by me. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this challenge. I just wanted to show you quickly some of the backend stuff. This was the game that I was developing on Unity. So some of it was pretty difficult. I must say, although it was like a very basic game hacking challenge, actually developing a game, like I want to try and find here the animation that I made for the bug. I think it was this one. No, it's, yeah, it's this. All right. So this is just the basic animation, literally just to change the color of the bug from pink to blue. So you'll notice that it cycles between the colors and it's kind of randomly set up to do that. The amount of like things that I had to create here. So every time you go in and create in a new node and then you're given it like some properties and then you have to connect all of these in and outs together. And yeah, it's like looking at some binary in IDA Pro or something. It was quite difficult to put all this together. So hopefully people enjoyed it. And the next part of the challenge will be a little bit more difficult. It won't be just client side. There'll be some server side elements and some anti-cheat protections. So I hope you'll check that out as well. And I'm not too sure which channel this will be on. I'm trying to split up the videos like last year between my channel, CryptoCat, and the Integrity channel. So if you're finding some of the videos missing on one side, make sure to check out the other channel as well. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.